uh, the question is how to fix a leak on the roof how and how much would it be when we bought the dome the seller posted that the roof was done over four years ago which is currently seven years now uh, a couple years ago they noticed leaks in a few areas and that year they had a really wet spring and lots of rainy days okay kind of um, start <laughs> all right yeah i would say uh um, I guess I'm trying to think of how, I mean, where she wanted to go with that question, but as far as how much it would cost, I guess, um, that's kind of a tough one, of course, because it always depends on where you're at, but I would say per square, you're going to probably, if you were to compare it to a conventional home, you're going to look at least probably double the cost on a per square basis, just because there's more cutting involved. It's not hard or complicated. It just goes a little slower. So it's going to cost a little more for that reason. Um, there shouldn't be any leaks if the roof is done correctly. However, I mean, there's uh, no reason a geodesic dome roof should leak any more or less than a conventional house. But if you did either one of them wrong or you miss a detail, um, it might lead to problems. Um, however, if it was done seven years ago, even with lower end shingles, you should still get quite a bit of life out of it. So if there are some leaks, it might just be some isolated areas where they didn't properly roof it. Um, in fact, I think, Carrie, there might be a couple of pictures in there that I think we might have of some dome roofs to kind of show some examples of how if you roof them wrong, even if they're brand new, they may leak. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of let you get into the story a little bit, Dennis, since we're kind of on the dome roof thing, because this is a good example of how um, they used very inexpensive materials and did not do it correctly, and it did not last long. Um, yeah. So, I'm dealing with a house here that was done, uh, and we've seen several examples of this. These are ridge cap shingles. That's what you see lining each of the joints on the outside of the shingles. Now, the first mistake here is they use three tab shingles. This is the cheap really cheap three tab shingles. They do not work on domes. You see the line along the bottom of the shadow line. Those tabs are hanging there. The wind can flip them up really easy. There's an overlap kind of in the middle towards the top in that middle triangle. There are two of the tabs that are lifted up. So this whole dome was done in that as a re-roof on a hailstorm job by an insurance um, company. And this, this company just came along and said, oh yeah, we can do domes. Well, the owner sued them for this job because you can see the shingles are coming off the ridges. Ridge caps at an angle collect water that goes behind it. And you'll notice the lines never are continuing across the dome. That's really hard to do. So the water goes behind and gets, you have a leak. So this, uh, this dome, they were taken to, well, they didn't go to court. They went to conciliation court and met uh, lawyer to lawyer. And we were called in as expert witnesses. And here's the new roof that the owner got. Nope, not that one there, that one there. So this is a house down in uh, Minneapolis. It's hard to see. I didn't have a close up picture, but we overlap the joints on the roof. This is how we've sealed roofs for many, many, 30, 40 years here. Um, in the beginning, we just, you know, we tried a few different things. We tried wrapping the dome with shingles that didn't work. Architectural laminated shingles, buy the best you can buy. Right now, we recommend Malarkey is the company, that's a family name, and Legacy is the brand uh, or the model of the Malarkey shingles. They are a 50 year shingle. That's five zero, a 50 year shingle. They are class four, which is the highest rating for hailstorm. Um, they'll take 130 mile, they're rated for 130 mile an hour wind speed. And actually they'll do better than that. But you have to nail them on with uh, six to eight nails. You can't just use you know three nails and you're done. So it's a whole process in roofing. We do have a chapter that is available from our construction manual, call it chapter 16 on roofing. And you can go online and you can order that. If you've got a roofer coming around saying, oh, I can do that. You need to say, how, you go, how are you going to do that? 
and let him explain how he's going to do it. You may need to, he may need to buy this. It's a $30 purchase download off of our internet. So with that, he knows how to overlap these shingles. The point up shingles are done first. Then you do the point down shingles on the first row and overlap the point up shingle by five to six inches. So it's a whole procedure, but it's carefully explained. And we offer, you know, verbal assistance here, which you want to call us. We do, um, or we are planning to update a lot of the stuff and the roof is one of them this spring. We'll be updating that with some video. So we will have video features available. I did see, uh, we got a question pop up in the chat. How far do you overlap the rinky shakes? I happened to catch that as I was going, going by there. And uh, uh, that's a little bit of a different application. The rinky shakes really kind of rely on the underlayment more for the waterproofing. So there's not a lot of under overlap on those. Um, you know, on the corners, a lot of people will just do maybe an inch. It's just enough to cover, make sure that your uh, underlayment is protected from UV light and hell damage. And then the way the shakes themselves overlap on the sides and tops and bottoms are only a half inch overlap. So, um, so there's not a lot of overlap on the rinkies. So, um, okay. Oh, here we go. This is an aluminum shingle. It's got a color on one side and it's ridges. And this is a very heavy duty. This is a lifetime roof right here. This will, you won't have any problems. We've had one close by here actually go through hailstorm. There's no damage. The ridges are so tight in here that you're dealing with the, the hailstorm hitting an edge and not having a flat surface to dent. So there was no damage on that one at all with the hailstorm. Yet there were three other domes in the area and one of them had a really cheap roof. The entire roof was replaced. The two others had partial or the hailstorm had come through. Yeah, I don't know if this will show up, but this is kind of how they look on a, it's probably not going to work with my uh, background. So never mind. <laughs> we'll have to, I'll grab a couple, I'll throw a couple of Rinky photos on our next dome talk so we can show those, um, show what the completed look, roofs look like. So, okay. And Carrie's probably searching for one now. We got a few, but maybe we'll throw one on later. But if you are ready for the next question, Carrie, I think we're ready. 